Hello, in today's video, I'm going to talk about Socket.io. This is a library in JavaScript that uh, implements the WebSocket protocol. Uh, an HTTP protocol, like the database call and stuff, is two-way communication, but it's not a fully two-way because a communication has to be initiated by the client. And the client sends a request to the server, the server responds with something. The server cannot proactively push stuff to the client. It's not allowed. And this HTTP protocol will not allow us to do a lot of stuff. For example, the real-time video games like StarCraft II, um, like other stuff like database promulgation. Uh, database has changed. How does the client know that database has changed? Uh, so the server has to proactively push the change to the client. Um, there's also other applications such as real-time chat um, application. The client wants to send a message, every other client will be able to see the message. So this is the real-time chat example. So I'm the client number one, person one. Hello, my name is Claire. And everybody will see this new message. The person two respond, hi, I am Jake. Uh, so every time you type some message, everybody sees the message. So whenever a client sends a message, it sends to the server, the server then broadcast the message to every single client. So that's the first example app. I will show you how Socket IO works in this app. First, the server side. Let's just to use more real estate. The app MTS file, which is uh, the same as app.js file. Yeah, I use TypeScript. You need to install on the server side the socket.io libraries. npm install socket.io. Then you need to import the server class from the socket.io. And you also need to import the create server function from the Node.js's HTTP module. Import these two guys because your express handles only HTTP stuff. Uh, for the socket IO protocol, the, the not socket IO, the web socket protocol, you will have to uh, use additional stuff. Once you import these two libraries, uh, you can just uh, consume them. First, create an app just like any other Express app. Then you use create server function from Node.js to create a server of this app. Then you use IO equals new server, the server constructor imported from the IO library. Um, then you can create a server with WebSocket enabled. Then the code to consume message from the client is extremely simple. Whenever the client sends an event with the name message, uh, uh, with the payload, which is a text string, uh, whatever the message the user typed, you will just broadcast with another event called a message. So the, even though these two events are both called message, this is the event emitted by the client. This is the event, event emitted by the server. The server would emit a message event and to every single client. We can see io.emit, which is broadcasting. And it also will prefix the message with the sucked ID, the first two letters of the sucked ID. Yeah. So the client knew, will know who sent the message. Well, which user send a message. So that's on the server side, just a couple lines of code, really simple. Now on the client side, it's no more difficult. On the client side, I used Angular. So in the services, chat services, I create a service which uses a behavior subject. Behavior subject is a special type of observable and also an observer. It stores just one value, the latest value, the cache's latest value. So I create this observable, then I create two methods. Send a message whenever um, the component, uh, so this service will be consumed by a component. Whenever a component submit a text message, I would emit a message event. This is the same event we just reviewed on the server side code. So whenever the client emits a message event, I grab its payload, the text string, and I broadcast on the server to every single client. So this is very simple, emit a message event with a payload that is a message. Now the get new message is also fairly simple. I, whenever the server emit an event called a message, uh, which is a message from anyone, could be from yourself, you would grab that message and ish, emit that message using this uh, message observable behavior subject. Because behavior subject is both an observable and an observer, it has a next method. 
as an observer. You can emit new values. And then you will return this behavior subject as an observable. So the new value can be consumed by your component. Yeah, I hope this is not too confusing. Let's look at the code on the component side. Super, super easy. I grab that service. Whenever this component initializes, it will use this get new message method to subscribe to the new method method the messages that is sent from the backend. The backend sends the message, the service grabs it and returns the message in an observable. That observable is subscribed by uh, the component. So the component will get every single message. Then it will uh, append the message to this array of strings. Um, the send message is even easier. I just send a message by invoking this method uh, from the service. Uh, once you send the message, you would make the text box empty again. So the user is ready to type in another new message. The template is even easier. You just display the list of messages. Um, yeah, a list style. Uh, I did not use any legend, so it's none. So I display the list of messages, and also I create a button. Whenever the user click on this button, this input box will the text in this input box will be sent to the backend um, because this is a new message. You can also press the carriage return key. That's a two ways of submitting a new message. You click a button or press your return key. Um, so I use two-way data binding. So that's pretty much the app. It's super super easy. The real time chat app. The next example is an application for reserving rooms. So we have a fixed number of rooms. Say the person one logs into the app. He needs a room from 8 o'clock to 12 p.m. And it's going to be a conference room. Check. OK, this conference room C470 is available. You can just make the reservation by clicking this button. You can see person one reserved a conference room between 8 and 12 uh, for this day, for today. Now, person B also wants to make reservation, but he wants to make reservation from 10 to 12 for today. And it's also a conference room. And he checks. Oh, all rooms are taken. Why? Because there's only one conference room, and that conference room is reserved between 8 to 12. So 10 to 12 time slot is not available. Now, person 1 makes changes to his reservation. Instead of reserving the room from 8 to 12, he reserved it from 8 to 9, 9 a.m. Submit. So you can see person 1 made a new change of the reservation from 8 to 12, from 8 to 12 to 8 to 9. So he only needs the room for one hour, and it's no longer in conflict with person B. So the person B's screen updates right away, and this 10 to 12 time slot, slot now have an available room. So the person B would click on reserve. So if we look at the room's reservation status, conference room, you will be able to see two reservations, one made by person A between 8 and 9, the other made by person B between 10 and 12. So the changes, the cancellations, the modifications are broadcasted live to every single client so that whenever a room becomes available, it pops right away on the screen or a room becomes not available, it will disappear from the screen. So that's the uh, Office Reservation app that uses the sucked I.O. to broadcast live database changes. The second real-time room reservation application is slightly more complex than the real-time chat application. So let's look at AppJS or AppMTS. It's simpler. You do not emit any event in your AppJS or you do not respond to any event. You just log user connected, user disconnected. But you do define this const io uh, app set socket io. You name this io object socket underscore io uh, using the app set function. So the app set gives a name to this io object so it can be consumed in your controller. The backend controller is the key for this application. If you go to the routes, this routes, this controllers is the callback functions. Um, for MongoDB database. Because we named the socket IO, socket underscore IO using app set, now we can use request app get to get a hold of this IO object, uh, which implements the WebSocket protocol. 
And whenever there's database changes, for example, a reservation is canceled, you would emit database DB change event to every single client. So emit just one event. And this event has an event name called DB change. It does not even have a payload. So our logic is very simple. Whenever some database changes, be it cancellation, new reservation, modified reservation, does not matter. I just know that database changes, I just resubmit a query to update my list of available buildings or available rooms. So the back end, we have something in the controller instead of in the app.js file. On the front end, it's super easy. Uh, the, the service, it's called Socket IO service. You can see we just, uh, whenever this, uh, it's got a DB changes, a function. Uh, whenever received the event called a database change, I would just uh, emit this event to the, this is a, a, called a subject, instead of behavior subject, it's called a subject. So the subject will just keep broadcasting messages. I would just emit this new message, database changes, so the component that consumes this service will know that database change has occurred. Now let's take a look at component, just now is the service. The component on the front end is also very simple. We have multiple components consuming this service. So we will find one of them. Um, edit this guy. This, this is one component that consumes the service. Whenever there are some database changes, what are you going to do? Uh, you will just refresh your query. This is the component that display a list of available rooms. Whenever there's a DB changes, this event happens, I would just, uh, if the user already submitted a reservation inquiry, so the user is looking at a list, and the database has a change, I would just submit on submit inquiry, just invoke the on submit inquiry again. I just make the API, the API call to get a fresh list from the database because I know database has changed. So whenever this database change, I rerun my query to grab a new list of available rooms from the database. So that's the front and the back end. I apologize, I cannot share this code this time. Um, this code is uh, private. 